Hello and welcome to Learn on Shape. Now on the video series, we are going to be creating a bunch on YouTube and sharing them publicly with everybody for free. But there are going to be some videos that I'm going to have as a private learning system. And if you want to learn about that kind of stuff, if you come and subscribe to our mailing list, it will cost you nothing. Just give me your email and I'll let you know when there's some free videos out that aren't going to be on YouTube and keep you up to date with what's going on here at Learn on Shape. So let's carry on with what we did last time is that we went to Onshape and we created a new sign in. Now I'm going to grab that sign in, learn Onshape, quick start right there. We're going to log in as that person. I'm going to give you a quick tour of what we have going on here. What you have on this side here is how to create. Um, you can create your own files or your document. You can create a new document or you can import files. We'll cover the importing of files later. Create a folder to sort everything or create labels to help sort things as well. There's a whole bunch of different things and nuances in here, but you know, when you're first starting out, the biggest thing that you're gonna to need to be able to do is come in and create a document. And we'll do that just shortly. Um, and you're also gonna have a list of what is recently opened, files that are created by you, files that are shared with you, and files that are public. Now, the public is where things are really cool. This is where everybody shares their public files. And you're gonna be, any of the files you have, if you have a free account, is going to be free. And this is where you're going to find all those files. Um, you'll also have it in your recently opened in my on shape because you'll be the one who has it. And you can sort these by how many likes they have um, as far as the, the models go or how many links to it, how many copies have been made. These are different ways to come in and, and sort things or when it was modified. So you can look at the most recent files being made by people. But what you came here to figure out is how to create your own files. So let's get in here. We'll hit document. We'll create a new document. We'll say this is the first document and we'll make it. And you have to create a public document. And the reason why is that you're not professional. If you are professional, it'll automatically default to being a private document. Now, what we have here is a part studio. And you'll notice down at the bottom, you'll have these tabs. And you can add more tabs by clicking on this bottom piece here. And you can create a new part studios, new assemblies, drawings. You can create a folder to put everything in to help sort. And you can also import files and you can Im import things, even videos you can import into the system and you can watch them on the tab as well as PDFs and a whole bunch of other documents. The way a CAD system works uh, as far as drawing a part goes is that you're going to have to create a sketch, a 2D sketch, and then you're going to extrude it or you're going to revolve it or you're going to do a whole bunch of different things. But you need a place to start that sketch. Then you can start it on a front plane. You can start on a side plane, top plane. And with anything here, you're going to notice that it's in this little tree here. This whole tree view will give you everything that you've worked on. And if I mouse over something, you can see that there's an eyeball there. So let's say I don't want to see the top plane anymore. And I don't want to see the right plane anymore. I'm only going to be working on the front plane. So there, suddenly the interface is much more clear. And you can also hide the origin, but I recommend that you leave the origin on there. The origin is something that I use constantly and is a very handy little tool and reference. The next thing I want you to notice is that you have this little cube up here. Now with this cube, if you cr click on the front, you'll notice that it rotates to the front view. And if I click on one of these little pucks in the top corner, is that it's going to move over to that view as well, or the top, and I'm sure you get the idea. One thing that's kind of neat though, is that you can also hit these arrows on the side, and it will rotate 45 degrees on that view. And we'll just do this one here, so we rotate up 45 degrees, and you can use your middle mouse the roller, this zoom button, and you can roll in and out to zoom the, the view. And you can also hit these arrows and that will rotate the view around the axis that you're currently looking at. Now, if you want to rotate, free rotate, just kind of spin it around is that I want you to click on the right mouse button, hold it down and then move your view. And you'll see that you can rotate things around just like I'm doing right now. So that gives you a way to kind of flow around, fly into the object, zoom in, zoom out, it's super handy and super easy interface. But if you want something really specific, like the front view, click on the front view and it'll zoom in on that. Next thing we're going to cover here is the views themselves. So you can have an isometric, diametric, or trimetric view. And that kind of relates to these little buttons up in the top here. Um, we'll cover that later, but basically it's sort of the angle view that you're looking at. Feel free to click on that once you have a 3D model to see what it's all about. In the, for the most part, it's not something that's super critical. You can create named views. Again, that's something I'll probably be covered in a, in a later video series, but it's something that you might want to click in and take a look at. Now, if you have like a small part or a big part and it's either taking up too little of the screen or too much of the screen, 
you can hit zoom to fit. Now, you know what, what I'm gonna do, kind of jumping around here a little bit, but so I'm gonna click on the front view and I just created, I clicked on the sketch button that was up there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm gonna click on there and come out here and click there. So now this is just rough and dirty. I'm just creating a some 3D geometry so we can see what some of these viewpoints and stuff are. From there, I'm gonna extrude and that's gonna take the profile of that sketch and it's gonna extrude it out a certain distance. And then we're gonna say, okay, that's good. And now we have a kind of a cube that I can start demonstrating some things. And we're gonna hide the front view. So now we've got a cube that we can look at and rotate around. So now we have that, let's get back into here. And we have zoom to fit. So if I hit zoom to fit, you'll notice that it's zoomed up to take up all the space in the screen. So if there's a point in time where I've zoomed in too far and I can't figure out where everything is, come down here, hit zoom to fit, and I'll bring everything back into view. And the same thing applies if you were zoomed way out and it's just this little tiny thing way off in the background that you can't do anything with. Again, zoom to fit is your hero here. It'll pop right back up in there. Now, you can zoom to window. So if we do zoom to window, I can choose, I want to just look at that one area right there and it will zoom into that one area. Zoom to window again is something super handy if you're trying to get in for detailed stuff. Now, what I want you to do is go through and click on things like shaded without edges and you'll notice that all the edges disappeared and you've got this view shaded with hidden edges. Now, what this is gonna do is it's gonna show you those edges again, but it's also gonna show you the, the rectangle in the background and where everything is. Hidden with edges removed, so basically you're getting rid of everything and you're just kind of going to a 3D line drawing with the background missing. The next one I believe is hidden edges visible. Again, it's plain, so it's just like a, a paper sketch in 3D. You can do translucence where you can actually see through the part and it's not just blocked off. And you have curvature visualization and draft analysis. That has a lot to do with curvy parts. I'll show you curvature visualization. It shows you um, these, this sort of zebra stripe and it lets you know where the sharp edges and everything are when you're doing something curvy. Again, that's something that'll be covered way off in the future. And the same thing for draft analysis, that has a lot to do with doing molded parts. Now there's also perspective. So if you're actually looking at something and there's perspective, this is how you create it. Because what you're looking at normally doesn't show as if it's kind of disappearing off into the distance. If you look at this cube, you'll notice the back is narrower than the front. So this line is longer than that line. Therefore, it kind of gives you a depth. So you can turn that perspective off as well. Now up in the top here, you're gonna see a toolbar. Now each toolbar is gonna to be specific to what you are doing. So right now we're looking at something where we've got a cube and we have all the tools that I can do to a solid or to a surface. So if I wanted to create like a fillet along an edge or to round off an edge, is I can click on that edge and it will do a 0.2 inch round on the edge of that. And these are the kinds of tools that you can currently use for that model right now. You'll notice that before when I was on the front plane, I clicked on the front plane and I clicked on sketch, toolbar up here has changed. And this is all the sketch tools that you're gonna be getting into and using. And all of that is great to have. One thing you'll also notice is that when you come up and you have these dialogues that show up, there's always a little question mark Hit that question mark and it will take you to the help and it will tell you what this is all about and it will give you a rundown of everything. Highly recommend you go through some of these. If you have any question, first thing to do, doesn't always answer your question, but it will at least put you in the right ballpark is to hit that question mark and figure out how to do things. For example, let's say I hit the rectangle tool. I come down here and I create a rectangle based off of that plane. You'll notice that was looking kind of weird and that was just because the view I had was in not in the front plane, it was somewhere else. And I believe if I hit this down here, it's gonna tell me corner rectangle. This is the steps on how to create it and how it all works. That is basically how these different toolbars work. What we have here is a part file. And this is where you create the individual parts or places where you create things that are static and don't move between each other. But imagine bolting a couple of pieces together. So imagine having two of these blocks are gonna end up screwed together or bolted together or are separate entities. In that case, you're gonna to wanna to create an assembly. So click on the assembly tab and we'll click on insert. And again, you'll notice the toolbar has changed. This is where everything's gonna be as far as what you need to make all these things work. We're gonna insert and we're gonna insert that first part. We're gonna create one there and we can insert a second one if we want to. 
and we can insert other parts from other files if we need to as well. But this way, oops, I canceled out of that. So you'll notice that sometimes you, you hit the wrong button. And this is something that's fairly new is I made the insertion or I, I canceled out of the insertion. That's not what I wanted. I can hit the restore button and that'll take me right back to where I was. The different user interfaces on different CAD systems will confuse you and your way of moving a boat might not necessarily be right. And there's always a way to kind of back out of things. Back to the assembly. Now that we have parts inside the assembly, we can, you'll notice that I can move these parts around. Now, moving the part around is really easy in an assembly. You can click and drag it. You can fix them down. You can have this one related to that one and all sorts of cool things. But it looks almost exactly the same as a part studio. You might not notice that the toolbar is different at the top or not notice that you're in a part. And I can click on this and I can start dragging, but it's not moving around. And the reason why is that you're in a part studio. You gotta keep in mind where you are and certain things you can and can't do within each document. So now we have the part studio and we have the assembly, but what if you needed another part studio? Well, that's easy enough. You come into here, you can click on the plus sign and you can create a new part studio. Or alternately, you can create a new assembly. So you can create as many tabs as you want down here to work on a large project and create different part studios, different uh, pieces and different assemblies. But this video is basically just to kind of get you familiar with this user interface. Now, one of the best things, instead of coming in here and looking at my first document, if you want to go back to sort of the original, where everything began, is always click on the on shape and that will bring you to your on shape. You can see your first document that you created. You can see uh, other files that were created by you, public, and all these other things. Also, remember, there's tutorials and samples. Now, these are great. This is tutorial one. It's an on shape tour, just like what I'm doing right now. I recommend you come in and Go through that because there's a ton of things that I've missed. Again, this is sort of like the quick and dirty quick start. Let's go to public and let's just take a look at what somebody else has done. Now this farm bot Genesis, this looks pretty cool and it's going to be much more complex than what we're going to get into, but it will give us a couple examples of things that are in here. You can see that they've uploaded a logo and you can see that. Now this isn't your usual CAD file. This is a JPEG or uh, I'm not sure what file format it is. You can have different screw hole templates. You have a license. So this is a PDF document and you can read a PDF document right within Onshape. So you can create, if you're doing a project that has PDFs and stuff, this is a great way to come in and start organizing things. And you'll notice that this person has like, basically we are in a folder called Meta. Let's click on the home button and you'll notice that there is all the different files or different parts of the file that they have, the hardware, the cable. And I recommend that you keep things nice and organized like this. This is one of those things that I don't necessarily do all the time, but it is something that is so worth your effort. But in the meantime, let's look at this top level assembly. Okay, so now we have this large file in here and you can rotate it around and take a look and zoom in and do everything that you need to on here and to see what other people have done. So again, go into the public area, find a model that interests you, open it up, monkey around and stuff, but keep in mind that you are not an owner of this file. So this file here, the public one, you're not going to be able to edit it. You're not going to be able to play with any of the sketches or anything. You're not set up in this to be, um, you haven't made a copy of it and you're not set up to be an editor of it. Then you aren't going to be able to play with anything in here other than being able to export the files. To overview, we have the on shape interface. When you land, when you come into the first little bit here, you're going to come onto here and it's going to put you on my on shape. And it's going to show you the files that you've just recently opened. It's going to show you the files that you own. And if you click on one of the files you own or you create a file that you own, you're going to come into this interface and again, come in and click around and take a look at some of the tutorial files and see what's going on. Know that there's little tabs at the bottom letting you know about part studios and assemblies and also that those different tabs have different meanings to them. In the meantime, hopefully this has helped you out. Get in there, get dirty, and start modeling something up. In the next video, what we're going to actually start doing is creating a document and creating our first part and our first sketch. Please give me a thumbs up below if you like this video and leave any comments or questions you have below as well.